Namaste, Star Family. This is your Pick Your Card reading in honor of the solar eclipse, October 2nd, 2024, in the sign of Libra. In this event, cosmic event, we have the sun and the moon, obviously, new moon energy merged together, but we also have Lilith there, we have Mercury there, and the collective self node. So we are ending certain soul contracts. And we're going to ask, what are we now ready to reclaim? So let's pick those cards. I, I, I don't know what that is, but this definitely wants to come forward. That's going to be pile number one. Ooh, we got flow. I now open myself to inspiration and watch creativity flow through me. So pile number one. Mm, should I? Yes, I will. <laughs> Oppa, we like that. Pile number two, intuition. Through my subconscious, I trust my inner wisdom and intuition. That's going to be pile number two. And if you hear my little um, rooster crow, this is um, Jon Snow. <laughs> All right, it's morning time. It's time to rise. Oh, yes, my dear star child, it is time to rise up. Some of you know this is how I've, um, you know, labeled my YouTube membership levels. It's about time to rise up. And pile number three, we have acceptance. I overcome my biggest challenges by accepting what is. Okay, so... Pile number one, two, and three. Now, let's pick the zodiac sign. And obviously, you can choose whatever you feel called to. But I would suggest, because of the merge of the sun and the moon, with, in particular, the south node, to pick your south node sign. Again, it's up to you. Up. Let's put it a little bit here so we can see it. All right. Up. Have that. And let's see what we have for pile number one. We have Cancer. We have Taurus. We have Aries. And we have Gemini. Okay, so that's for flow. For um, pile number two, we have Pisces, we have Sagittarius, we have Libra, <clears throat> and we have a Virgo. All right. And last pile number three, we have a Leo, we have um, Aquarius, we have Scorpio, and we have Capricorn. Okay, so those are the three piles with all the zodiac signs. If that's something that helps you, I will see you there for those messages. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to your messages. So we have some soul contracts ending. What are you ready to reclaim? So let's look at those cards here. Oh, that was easy. Okay, we'll look at this. And then we'll take some of those cards. And I feel this is going to be for clarification here. Let's see. Oh, wow. Okay. I guess the cards are going to be <laughs> flowing in different way. Flowing in different way. Oh, okay. So, pile number one. Okay. And I'm just going to move this. So, that's for the zodiac sign. I suggest the south node at least uh, for some type of connection to you know a past life this is a soul contract that is ending okay and let's see what we have we have ancient power mysteries the oracle guides you to honor the power of your voice whether through spoken or sung words or through what you write speak about or stand for symbolically you have a potentially very powerful healing voice and you are guided to recognize 
the responsibility that you have for what you proclaim through your voice. Ooh, okay. And the three of cups, celebration, soul groups, time to focus. Um, you know what I feel here? That maybe in the past you were claiming, because I feel like you need to know what's, how, how something is coming to you because you've overcome something. And I feel that maybe in the past you used to say certain things about relationship dynamics, you know, um, maybe like, oh, um, I will never get this in a relationship or I will have to choose between a uh, career and love. Oh, see, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm even like uh, choking on it. Um, there was something about uh, not being able to have everything you wanted and attracting thus uh, this type of soul contracts. So you would start to give yourself empower yourself, affirm for yourself different ways to manifest relationship dynamics, okay? I really feel it here is the power of your voice. Maybe also, it's not for everyone, but I want to mention it because um, I'm hearing it. Uh, some of you, there's some type of like curse and curses. Listen, this is negative affirmations, or that came through with a lot of emotion. You know, um, I will do this even if it kills me. I will um, go after this or, you know, it's very intense. It's just like that, that energy and it's something you send out and then that comes back to you. I want to say it because this is ending. There's something that was once claimed and now there is a shift in that's going to occur in your dynamics in relationships, in your soul attraction. You know, some of you, maybe there was, you know, the three of cups can have this distortion of um, attracting third party type of things and not being chosen, you know, being the second option. So some of you, I really feel that what's flowing in now that you're reclaiming is your self-worth, is, is, is realizing through some of you, maybe you worked with mantra singing or you worked with affirmations, but you're reclaiming your power in relationships, in your soul group, being able to affirm also your uniqueness. Okay, let's see what else wants to come forward with this. What is pile one ready to reclaim uh, now that they understand how they perceive relationships is, is, is shifting? Oh, wow. You have the high priestess. Balance, intuition, and sacred, se oh, <laughs> sacred knowledge. Secret knowledge. Ooh. Okay. So some of you, Maybe what you've learned through this is the power of affirmations and the power of incantation, invocation, and your um, setting out in the world like greater ways to affirm what you want to manifest. There's something about, obviously, with here, um, this was actually, you know, in Egypt, this is, this is an instrument uh, for tuning you know it was helping get certain frequencies so there's a frequency shift you're leaving behind a certain vibration that was coming from your thoughts and thoughts that are words that you were speaking to yourself so there's an inner dialogue shift because that inner dialogue created a certain outer dialogue that manifested a repetition of attraction, especially for you, it seems to be about certain soul group, okay? And now, it seems that you're shifting because of your knowledge of the power of your voice, of the power of your words, of the power of your thoughts. We're receiving a lot of activation here. I feel like there's something here um, 
in the chart that we might want to look at. Ooh, okay, so Saturn, Capricorn, and fourth house. Okay, this is interesting because Saturn is the root, Capricorn, okay, it, this is like double association. Capricorn goes with Saturn. So that in the fourth house, this is a dynamic you're leaving behind that you inherited. This is something, you know, in your family, the dynamics of your family. This is something that uh, created a certain mindset, a certain perception. Maybe what you saw, especially in terms of your romance, recreating the dynamics of your parents' dynamics. Okay, I feel for some of you, there could have been divorces involved, uh, creating a certain reaction in you towards... Um, I'm going to say mating, partnering up, okay? Because I'm, we have a baby here, <laughs> okay? All right, let's see what else I feel now, because we were saying like now what are you attracting as far as like reclaiming uh, with this soul's ending. We have Jupiter. I love this. Oh, look at this. I told you. This is uh, soul groups. This is network and Pisces. Oh wow, you're definitely like you're you're what's shifting in you? It's probably that you had like a, a spiritual awakening and your realization of the power of your voice, of your thoughts creating a certain repetition of attraction. Now you're ending this because you've self-mastered your voice, your inner dialogue, and you're attracting people that are highly intuitive that are, uh, you know, here with Pisces, uh, empathetic to your soul's journey, that understand you, that can see you without maybe the past labels and judgment. <clears throat> you see, I'm like feeling it in my voice. Um, there's an expansion of that circle. Um, I really feel that it is very much attracting spiritual soul groups, like really your uh, soul tribe, which I love to see for you, pile number one. So you're reclaiming, I feel it's like you're reclaiming your soul family through, um, and that feeling of being able to be very unique and yet being part of the group without, um, without feeling shamed, guilted, you know, there's there's Lilith that is in this e solar eclipse energy. So there was something that you were uh, shamed for, blamed for, maybe something you did not speak up about, okay, that created this. You know, I've seen this, and I'm going to share something, because um, I like reference. So some of you, if you haven't seen the series, The Last Kingdom, there is this hero, okay, the main character, Uthred, okay? But I've seen, like, in this show, sometimes, like, a very loyal character as far as the, the mindset and, and for, you know, his words were very important, okay, when I give my word. And I saw that sometimes in the show, he would not speak up in certain dynamics. And people that he loved... Uh, perceived his silence as something that did not align with the truth. And I was like, almost like, always saying like, oh my God, if he only spoke up, if he only spoke up, I understood why he didn't, but I'd say, like things could have been different. And I feel like some of you, there were some times where you were silenced or silenced yourself. And that could be from past lives as well. Okay. Um, but you may have felt this, like in group dynamics or people pointing at you for something, and you didn't speak up because you were the bigger person or, um, or there were some certain fears or you couldn't, okay? It created this specific environment, okay? Some of you, I feel that it could have been because you're highly empathetic and you were trying by your silence not to create more waves or some of you sometimes you have uh, voiced out and saw how it created certain dynamics and you, you might have shut yourself down after or, or you know, like kind of uh, 
shine away your light, like dim out of your light because you didn't want others to feel uncomfortable around you. You feel very, very powerful in through your empathy, through how you feel the field. How, and that's why you have to understand with this magnetic power that I feel for you, pile number one, this is because you have a very secret heart field. I can feel it. I can feel how it expands and how it, 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 it you know, touches into um, the vibration of a group, of a scene, of an event, of, of, of a room, you know, how you can read the room and know that this is done by your heart. This is your heart that expands out you or you can feel it. But your desire not to create when you feel things that are off, your desire not to create more waves or not to speak up or to be attracted by the element that feels chaotic and to gravitate towards it to uh, smooth it out. You might have attracted a lot of karmic attraction that were just um, that could be narcissistic dynamic, or people that were jealous or co competitive with you. Um, but you're moving away from this. You're moving into a soul group. Okay, that's what you're reclaiming is your true soul family. People that can uh, feel um, what you have to offer. Okay, and some of you, it will be, okay, with network, it will be new clients, new job opportunities. Um, it's very expanded. It's not just intimate friendships or relationships. Um, let's see what we have here. Ooh, I love this. The mouse with the three of pentacles. Collaboration, follow your dreams, and research. You see, I told, like, some of you, you're, there could be collaboration with people that are, um, more in alignment with you and you're reclaiming the power of um, a feeling seen, a feeling that you matter, a feeling, you know, not there just to calm down others that then when they feel better, you know, like I feel like someone calling you and pouring onto you their problems and you help them smooth it out and realize that um, you were just another person they called and they, then they call another person and repeat that drama with them. Uh, it, it's just like them energy vampires. I really feel like some of you, that was energy vampire uh, situation. Okay. And that was probably because some of your thoughts were um, consuming you. You know, there was like, um, maybe you had to work on your energy boundaries. Okay, some of you, if you're still struggling with this at this time, I strongly suggest my um, super empath playlist. I'm going to put it up there, okay? If you don't see it up there, you will see it down there, but I should have super empath playlist. I always have my little <laughs> pen here because uh, some of you, if you're still struggling with this, I have, um, I think it's like five or six frequencies for different layers and levels of rewiring, deconditioning you from negative thought patterns and negative attraction, you know, jealousy, envy, mistrust, uh, anger between two people. Some of you, if you're still struggling with this, please do that because um, you're someone that's highly connected to frequencies. You're highly receptive uh, at a frequency level because of how you tap into the field. And now you're going to be able to tap into a field that is more in alignment with your heart instead of, you know, kind of like uh, putting out your heart out there so you stay safe. You know, you're going to actually glow more from within and just see what naturally where you gravitate instead of extending out always. You're just going to uh, extend more within. There's just, there's a shift. Some of you, more of you, you may have had a very, um, I mean, long, you know, time is all, <laughs> it depends on how you perceive time, but you had to go into solitude. I really feel you had to review a little bit of your dynamics. And some of you, if you're still in that process, 
so you can reclaim this solar eclipse is so good it's so good let's see what we have here look at this the north node with the 12th house Ooh, with gemini okay i love this because remember we're asking what are you ready to reclaim with the 12th house this is from the akash and this is something that was always meant to become yours okay when you were reaching the right frequency and when you're starting to attract and gravitate more towards this field of attraction of people that can see you that can see how much depth you have soul depth what's flowing okay with gemini gemini in in terms of light work is an alchemist he's a transmuter and there's something here also with the sacred twins you're from the past you're attracting you might if some of you i have to mention you know some of the possibilities that run through my head because this is a general uh reading some of you there's someone from the past that could be a mate that could be a soul mate okay it could be romantic or it could be someone uh at a soul level is meant to collaborate with you okay there's an attraction here okay i do feel though that in terms of the power that you reclaim is the power of soul alchemy the power of soul alchemy definitely there's something sacred about how you manage to shift those energies through the thoughts through the thought feel whatever you had to use and develop to get out of this wheel okay some of you if you're wondering, okay, please, um, I would say here, work with my soul fragment retrieval, okay? If you're, if you're still unsure or in your alchemy process, okay, let me see here. Um, fragments, I'll put, I remember, okay? That I really feel this strongly. Okay, let's see what else. Oh, okay. Ooh, the Knight of Pentacles. I really feel that there's someone coming. Uh, there's some offer coming. There's like you're reclaiming some type of manifestation. So some of you, if you have like a business or an idea for a business, an idea for a book, something that was slowing you down was end is ending because you had to go through this awakening, this awareness of how important it is to be in an environment where you're fully appreciated. Mm -hmm. This offer is coming, is, is coming your way, but the pace is in flow. Okay, I feel as some of you working with affirmations, you know, is very uh, important. I, I do have a personal, you know, invocation as far as reclaiming my birthright. This is something I channel. So some of you try to see if you want to write something, uh, whether it's a poem, whether it's something that's like, you know, affirming, I am, you know, I am ending soul contracts and now reclaiming um, my gifts, my power. I'm reclaiming uh, my birthright. Whatever feels in the line. It doesn't have to be long. It's just you have such a power frequency wise Mm, the five of pentacles let me see this five of pentacles is yes it's it's um i'm, I'm looking at the angles of the zodiac and it, this is about sacred cycles sacred cycles and the divine blessings that those sacred cycles created. Okay, so some of you, what I'm seeing is that there could have been patterns of rejection. Okay, and what, what this new, what you're ready to reclaim is greater collaboration. So now realize that the times where you feel like, oh, you're going to, uh, you reach out to someone or you feel attracted to someone, because that could be romantic. If there is a rejection, please 
trust this new flow. Trust this this alignment that it's like something from the past that you feel attracted to and that it will reject you. It will say no because there's a divine flow here that's saying that now you're going towards a sacred path, dear uh, pile number one. You're reclaiming a path where people don't reject you. They don't abandon you. They're here. Wow, look at this. Again, they are here to commit. And they are here with the Ten of Wands um, to commit even through the tough times. I feel as like some of you, um, there was just people that were there when you were lit up. That's what is energy vampires. Okay? You were lighting up the room and... When you were struggling, they were leaving. So that's what I'm seeing. Oh, the King of Cups. With We had Pisces here, remember? Um, some of you, I'm going to say it, uh, you could have Pisces in your chart. That, that could be something you want to look at where Pisces is in your chart. Oh, you could attract someone from, you know, um, the zodiac sign Pisces, okay? Yeah, but there's definitely here some type of um, alchemical process that you've, you're finally getting, like you're finally understanding how to alchemize some of those pain, rejection, feeling of abandonment, but also realizing they were coming from a certain pattern of thoughts, certain way of val or not valuing you yourself, okay? And now... This is important because you will see it. The people that are meant to be part of this soul group, when you're feeling low, when you're feeling heavy, they will not leave. They will not leave. Some of you, it's like something that you need to know. And they will also, look at this, they will also overflow from their own cup. That's, that's the difference. And this attraction is because you have it now. You're overflowing with your different change. You know, this solar eclipse, there's something that's going to hit you that you're going to realize about your soul contracts and that are now ending. Those energy vampires, people that were um, short-lasting or if they were constantly in your field, only in the good times, okay? Now you're shifting to people that are more spiritually inclined, that are ready to be there for you in friendships, in relationships, uh, harmony. And there's an overflow. So everyone is overflowing their cup. People are um, people that are already doing inner work. And it doesn't have to be like the same type of inner work that you're doing, but this is they're, they're able to be there for you because of their own inner flow, inner work. So there's, that's, that's the flow. You're overflowing. You're overflowing with a new energy now. You're, you're reclaiming with the cup the power of self-love, the power of self-worth, the power of um, focusing on what feels good, what feels right, instead of, you know, being attracted and gravitating towards, you know, helping always people um, that just, you know, just kind of like don't reciprocate. Okay, reciprocity is really big. So what you're reclaiming here is the power of your soul's alchemy. You're reclaiming the power of your voice, okay, and how it creates certain attraction. So that's what I have for you. If you are feeling this energy and you're still feeling yet stuck, remember you have the frequencies I've listed, but some of you, if you want to join my YouTube Soul Tribe membership called Starseed Rise Up, you will have access to a cosmic alignment energy session that will help with this ending and this soul reclaiming. Okay, you'll have the details down below. Remember, you can also like this video to support the channel to grow. Cosmic blessings your way, my dear one. I will see you soon. Namaste. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your messages. So we're ending soul contracts. What are you now ready to reclaim? 
So this is the intuition card. It says, through my subconscious, I trust my inner wisdom and intuition. Okay, if you chose through zodiac signs, Pisces, Libra, Virgo, and Sagittarius, I strongly suggest you watch uh, your south node. We'll put it on the side now. Okay, let's see what we have um, as far as your power that is reclaimed. What are you ready to reclaim? Ownership, buff right. Pile number two, what are you ready to reclaim? Okay. Ooh, two things. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. We have the brother in darkness. Whenever negative energy is present, it is a sign that we are ready to move more deeply into our feminine divine power. You shall overcome any negative energy with grace and triumph. Stay in your heart. There is no need to be afraid. Ooh, some of you, there's definitely... Um, past karmic endings of attracting, you know, um, contrast, you know, strong darkness, uh, contrast from where you stand as far as your own light and what you used to attract is th those messages really kind of, um, will show the past soul contract dynamic and how you're moving towards something different. So let's see what else Ooh, initiation. When you are being initiated into the divine mysteries of light, love, and power, there are moments of profound challenge. The key is to find the light within the challenge, the opportunity for growth that can transform any challenge into an experience of healing. With compassion and cleverness, you will not burn during your challenges. You shall thrive. There is here... A strong message that I feel for you as far as when things don't go as planned or as your mind told you it should be. There is a shift now in the release from the hold of your mind okay, that could have created more darkness and more drama than needed, okay, so I really feel that there's something here um, that you could have had to transcend in terms of drama, the way your mind w was wired, because your intuition is from your heart, and you know, I feel some of you, I don't know why I have to say it, the gut intuition, we also often say that the gut is the second brain. Maybe there was something about fixing your gut. Okay, some of you, that might be also an invitation. Um, if you have any type of GI problem issues, remember that's connected more to your intuition, to letting your intuitive, your gut feeling lead you versus trying to control it with the mind. So you're initiated here you're reclaiming this power of intuition this power of going with your gut towards certain dynamics relationship work opportunities whatever okay let's see what else i like this i like you know what i really feel i want to pull some dice here okay it doesn't make sense but it doesn't have to be oh this is for you definitely pile two it doesn't make sense. Remember, it's almost like it's saying it might not make sense. Like you're, what you're reclaiming is that following your bliss, not based on your mind, but based on your gut feeling. Okay, especially here with Aquarius that has this quirkiness in the Zodiac um, component. Um, this is interesting because in type of uh, in terms of light work, Aquarius is a way shower. It just does what it feels is right. It follows it. Here you have the second house, so very much about your beliefs, your values. It's saying, uh, you know, let go. Maybe some of uh, with the moon, there might have been some subconscious uh, beliefs. Okay, some of you, maybe you want to see what you have in your second house because it could be a sign of the work you had to bring, okay? 
um, but also your moon. Maybe some of you, you have a merge of planets or a square, okay, some, some type of dynamic with the moon uh, or something in your second house. This, with I really feel it's like also 11th house. It created a network of beliefs and probably some type of repetition of attraction. You know, some of you, there might have been um, just people that didn't see you. Or t I'm hearing taking you for granted. That's interesting. That might not be for everyone, but again, um, I, you know what I received? That's interesting. You could have attracted people that take you for granted because you took for granted those nudge of intuition. Or you have to recognize, go back into your memory bank and recognize the time when your gut feeling may have saved you. And it was not based on what you knew with your mind, but what you felt. And that's the power you're reclaiming, feeling, feeling your intuition, feeling it in your bones. Oof, I'm mean, like getting chills all over here. Okay, all right, pile number two. There's some type of initiation here. You in, And I feel this is kind of like um, igniting, igniting a power here. I have four cards for you like a very different flow but we will you have a different flow to you you have a different way to flow with things for some of you i feel that you have to recognize that your downloads your psychic gift they're coming first through your body you're just sensing all that is coming it's not your mind some of you, it is like the, the, it is a, there's a different divine order that is meant for you to receive. You know, how, how you're perceiving information, you know, with Aquarius, information, how you perceive information um, is very different than the crowd. I'm hearing the crowd, the average person. That's something you're reclaiming at this time. Okay, look at this, the chariot with... The horse, travel, victory, raw power. This is connected to cancer, okay? And um, cancer, in terms of Chinese medicine, connects to the spleen. The spleen is the only organ that is connected to all 33 vertebrae as far as its, you know, its, its power. So this is, this is something that is channeled through your DNA, I feel. This is something that was that now that you're ending the soul contracts of whatever, you know, like disempowered thoughts, disempowered thoughts. Let me see this again. There's, um, okay, here I feel it's like, um, especially what it says here, you know, moving more deeply in your feminine with negative energy. It's like when you're feeling off or when you're, instead of fighting with your mind, you deep dive within. You quiet the mind and you deep dive within. You deep dive in your body. You deep dive in your intuition. And you will see that this feeling of, uh, it was created by resistance. Resistance of your um, receptivity of your higher self. Some of you, you may have a lot of seventh house placement. Seventh house placement when you work with esoteric astrology is the ego versus the higher self. Okay, so that's kind of like the lower self versus higher self and how well you can integrate this. And this is why we're actually you know, seeing it also, the seven house with relationships, because we're mirror of each other. People are going to mirror to you certain things that you have to go through and not from pushing forward, but going deeper within. Okay. You have, ooh, the stag with the hierophant, big business, tradition, spirituality, Some of you, you had like a huge shift uh, with spirituality. 
Something in you got awakened to honor the spiritual aspect of yourself. Yeah, this is what is going to end. It's like honoring also your intuition. Look again with this with the handlers. Okay. You're highly, highly connected to the divine, to the cosmos. Some of you could be in astrology, in oracle, uh, you know, any type of oracle cards and things like that. The otter with the six of cups, reunion, reminiscing, inner child. Some of you, um, it could have been something from childhood that created this negative pattern. Um, maybe you were trying as a child so hard to be what your parents wanted you to be or had to comply. There was like something with the mind or trying to reason yourself in becoming a certain version for people to love you. Okay, I really feel this for some of you. And then we have the Page of Cups. What beautiful cards you have. Surprising insights, artistry coming up for air. This, you're, what you're reclaiming is much more space for your true self to come forward. Your very powerful, intuitive guidance is finally going to have the space when you're ending those contracts, you're going to finally have the space to reclaim how you navigate life from your gut feeling without having to justify it to others. You know, some of you, there was like, you know, maybe it was limiting your potential. Part number two, definitely limiting your potential in ways that I don't even think you can fully comprehend. Maybe you'll have to deep dive about this. Whoop. Scorpio, there was some um, karmic entanglement here. The sun and the 10th house. Karmic entanglement, that could have been also things that you attracted in your work, clients, but also boss, co-workers. But there's going to be a, you're going to see it. You're going to see how you attracted certain things and how now you're going to be able to find the space to shine more of your light. And if those things create like, um, you know, an ending with a, a job or whatever, let it fall apart. Let it fall apart. I really feel for you, there could be um, messages. I'm going to put it here uh, with the surrender frequency. And you'll find it up there. And if you never find, if you never ever find something that I mentioned up there, you find it below because um, YouTube limits me with how much I <laughs> can put some links there. Um, I I really feel like surrender. And by the way, you guys, when I created surrender, this frequency, it was because I had something from the past that created a panic attack. An anxiety attack. And I went to um, acupuncture. And when I got the treatment, the way I saw the needles, I was, you know, face down. But the way this map was placed onto my body, and it was something to actually release all that inflammation. You know, inflammation, overthinking, overworrying. Um, it's kind of like resistance. Just, I felt it right away. As soon as I was on the table and the needles just hit, it was like this, this huge ball of energy that was created from the mind because something from the past, from the child just came up and created this whole panic. And I feel like some of you, if you have things from the past like this that creates certain panic, surrender is the portal. It's just so good. There's something here for you to see. Go and check it out. Okay, let's pull those cards. That, that, that last card, I feel. Oh, look at this. Double higher thing. When you, when you honor the fact that you are first a spiritual being over a physical being, okay? You're a spiritual being having a human experience. 
then things will shift drastically. And this is what you're reclaiming. Your spirituality, how connected to the divine you are, you know. And some of you, it's also about spiritual devotion, commitment. Um, you might have certain things to uh, share, okay. You have certain things to share in this world that is very much connected to your spiritual side and aspect of yourself, okay? And it's under the, the, the initiation. This is something that maybe you had to learn and you're still, you know, learning. Maybe something, it's like a mix. Like, I feel as some of you, you already had started certain things, you know, um, but there was a block. There was a block and this solar eclipse is definitely shifting you, uh, honoring the moments where, you know, maybe the universe is stopping you. Like for me, like that example of a panic attack where like, I was like, oh my God, that was, I believe it was, was it around an eclipse? It was around a major cosmic event. And I was like, oh my God, this is so in alignment with all the uh, messages I was receiving. And I felt so blessed to have the knowledge of the frequency, the points in the body, the organs, the vertebrae that could help others, you know, um, get to that awareness. So, and I had to honor this, that a lot of the things that were going through my body, the cosmos was then offering me an opportunity to create something great for others and for myself, obviously, because that frequency is, um, I love that frequency. Some of you, if you don't know, like the sound of the birds singing in that frequency, it's very, it, bird singing creates safety. It, it's a sign that the birds are feeling safe, that there is harmony. So our nervous system is already connected to this, those signals naturally. So it's, it's, it creates right away a calming effect on the nervous system, you know? And some of you, this, this is what uh, the universe is saying, like take all that those negative experiences and turn it into gold. Um, there was a lot uh, already on pile number one, some messages about soul alchemy. Some of you, you might want to check it out. This stood out. Um, we have here Cancer and Taurus, and that was pile number one. Okay, so some of you, if you were also drawn to pile number one, there might have been something here um, that is related that you need to hear. Okay, we have the Page of Wands. Oh, I like this. Inspiration is coming forward. Inspiration from, oh, again, Six of Cups. How many times you're getting this? Okay, you're creating, it's almost like you're, you're healing, you have healed and you're healing your inner child. You're recreating something or you're feeling inspired. Um, Maybe some of you, you had certain things you love to do as a child and that you're allowing yourself to do again or that are going to come and manifest your way, okay? You have the magician and you have the empress. Oh my. Some of you... <clears throat> I don't know, it's not going to resonate with everyone, but I have to share it because between all the childhood things and now the empress that's pregnant, if you desired a, a pregnancy, if you've been willing, wanting to conceive a child, this solar eclipse and what it's ending in your life is allowing you to create that child. There was an energy, know that your child also wants to align with a certain frequency. When you conceive and when they're born, it's, it's a soul agreement. It creates, it's, it's just so intricate. I can't even explain it. It's not, there's no words to explain this. Okay, but that's not for everyone. But here I feel that there is um, a creation from your heart. A creation that you're going to love and others will love as a result. Because you have, you know, shifted your environment. Let's see. Saturn, Gemini, and the eighth house. You know what? I feel as some of you, part of this offer is to actually help others. And you might be, a, you know what? You might be a karmic 
cycle breaker. You might be someone that had the heavy chains to break free from, you know, with the spleen here, remember? You had um, the Taurus is connected to the Hierophant. You have it twice. Um, this is also connected to the large intestine. You had to digest, process a lot of things, and some of it was not yours. So you had to break the karmic chain to let whatever people related or situation were related to those chains. You had to break them so people can deal with their karma. And the only thing that can help you uh, do this is that deep dive within is that you know allowing those feelings to go through you so this is this is very interesting i really feel that you're uh, reclaiming the power of uh breaking those chains whatever you're but that could be also something that you offer in return okay yeah that's what i have for you pile number two what what a story that what a, a blessed you know, ending and a new beginning for you that is coming forward. Okay, so some of you, if you are feeling this and you're feeling, you know, some type of blockages, the solar eclipse, oh my God, you know, before I was able to talk about it or pull those cards, I had to do the cosmic energy alignment session. I could not speak. Like there is some very strong tension uh, with Saturn, actually, Saturn is in retrograde in Pisces, that quincunx, a very sharp tension with the solar eclipse. And we also have Chiron, the wound. Remember I told, like here, it could be a wound from the past, from childhood, um, that was uh, quincunx to the midheaven. And the midheaven is your public figure. It's how your public life, how others can perceive you and see you and thus people you attract, okay? So there, there, there could be some tension. Some of you want to join this cosmic session. It's part of the Starseed Rise Up YouTube membership. You can see all the details down below. All right, my dear one, please remember also to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow, sending many cosmic blessings your way. Namaste. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your messages. This is all about soul contracts that are ending. And now what are you ready to reclaim? So you pick the card acceptance. I overcome my biggest challenges by accepting what is. And if you choose according to zodiac placement, we have Capricorn, Scorpio, Aquarius, and Leo. I strongly suggest your south node, especially with this merge strong and powerful merge of this new moon solar eclipse with the south node which is unbelievable let's see now what you are ready to reclaim we might have some obviously uh details about your past attractions wow you're getting so many cards here okay all right let me create some space for myself i feel about space i want space Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Let me show it to you. Okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think. This is, okay. Um, feels very much like the moon on the side and the sun. And this is like Merkaba, yin yang. In order to have things like in for yourself to ascend, for your life to unfold in alignment with your most authentic self and true you. You need a perfect balance. There's a specific ratio that spins the masculine and the feminine, yin and yang together, that allows you to blossom. And I feel like here, you might have to, you might reclaim this power of ascension, of knowledge of ascension. But that means that you probably had to overcome and end a distortion of it. Maybe some of you, you were more into your mind, too much in the mind, not enough in the intuition, in the body, okay? Remember, um, and, and there was there's something here. So let's look at the cards, but there's definitely, I'm gonna put it for you right away, the yin yang playlist. Okay, that could be something that helps you if you never check it out. Um, you have 
we have 12 organs, okay, that are resonating with the 12 zodiac signs. Okay, this is so weird. I'm like receiving a message on my phone. I know it's um, spam, but it says, hello, I have good news for you. I am Anna, a recruiter. Okay, so we need part-time assistant, whatever. Um, and there's something here. We'll see how that aligns, but maybe Anna has this, you know, it's, how do you call it? A palindrome? A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, okay? To, to, like, whatever way you see it, it's like a mirror. Ooh, a mirror effect something about mirroring okay okay all right let's put it all together you're, you're hi pile number three highly mysterious it's almost like you're someone that puts things together uh, clues insights in and that's what you're meant to do put them together so some of you um there's something here about clues and how your brain works with your body and maybe there's a secret realignment here uh, I was telling you about the 12 organs that resonate with the 12 zodiac sign um, and you have yin organs and yang organs and that helps you you know vibrate in greater alignment with the cosmos because I really feel as some of you um, some of the things that you had to accept maybe some of the past drama okay by the way this is um, this is something I have to share. Some of you have had a lot of drama. We have a muse, Melpomene, that is connected to theater, and tragedy and drama, um, acting that I have channeled for uh, the YouTube membership for the goddess level. If that's something that interests you, you'll see the reading here, a muse, Melpomene. It came up, uh, you know, it came up in pile number two and I didn't tell them well, hopefully everyone will see all those readings um oh it's interesting you know when I say somebody like I feel like some of you people would witness you go through challenges and they had the key to help you but they didn't that's interesting that's very interesting. Let's see how that unfolds. I'm getting so much insights for you at once. And I feel it's almost like maybe you're in sometimes overload of messages and you need to create the space. Remember, I, I wanted the space. Give me space, space. So I can organize my thoughts according to my feelings. And I feel this is something that you need to reclaim is the space for you to process all the amount of information that you're receiving constantly. Okay. You're highly receptive, highly. We have in the center, the chariot of ascension, the Merkaba, a spiritual practice has come or is soon coming to your attention that will help your soul's journey. Take your time to develop and practice your chosen spiritual discipline regularly this will help you grow in power and grace anchoring the spiritual light within the body of your soul okay this is you need it's like if you're not doing it just yet you need to create some space in your day just like you created on your schedule okay you need to create that space for you to process all those things. That's the only way for you to end the repetition of overload, overcharge, overwhelmed, run down, drained, all of those things, okay? You have to accept that you're highly receptive and that you're a spiritual being. You need that space, okay? Some of you, again, I, 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 need, I feel called to it and that's a lot of frequencies. Some of you, if you have access to any level, so the first one is the Kundalini level, I have a Merkaba activation. Okay, Merkaba activation for you, um, if that's something you want to join. Okay, that's part of what I share. I share some of my spiritual practices, my spiritual alignment. Some of you, that might be something you're looking to have. Okay, the Lunar Queen. This is a deep feminine wisdom that recognizes the importance of cycles of rest and replenishment 
as essential to balance our actions of power and demonstration. You are asked to allow this replenishment for yourself now, trusting that you are in a cycle of creation that is about to shift into a new phase. Release and enjoy the process without having to control or force it. Wow. So some of you being connected to the cosmic dance between the sun and the moon is highly supportive. Understanding how with every cycle there is a certain intention. And here we're seeing we're reclaiming something because we're ending soul contracts. We're ending soul contracts. So what are you reclaiming here? First, you need to create that space. That space for you to process all of this. Okay? And you'll be able in that space to recognize what's yours and what's not. And grow from this process. Okay? I, re I feel a swirl. Your feminine energy is so deep. Pile number three. You know, I'm feeling this void energy creating space. Again, that's one of my frequencies. Okay? I will list it and I think... You know, uh, if I don't have enough space to uh, list all of this, I will have it down below uh, the void. Uh, this is really magnificent energy here that you can create. Okay, now let's see what we have. Portal of light. It is only this physical reality that is bound by time and space. You are a conscious being. On levels beyond the physical world, you are guided to work with your healing powers beyond the confines of time and space. You will not become ungrounded through such spiritual work. You are not leaving your earthly connection behind. You are merely adding to it. Some of you, it's, it's creating the space and time for your spiritual practice, for being with yourself. Don't use the kids, the husband, the drama, the sick parents as an excuse. You will enhance everyone's life when you do this. And create that sacred space because you're highly, deeply connected to the feminine, okay? But if the feminine is like, it has so much information to give you, but the mind is busy with the outer world and creates the chatter there's no there's no essential you can't find that space of alignment that then creates and generates a frequency that will benefit to all the people the ones that also overwhelm you you know the kids the job the work the deadlines all of this it's just a sacred acknowledgement and that's something that you have to accept and that you have to create because this will give you back your powers, your powers of ascension, the powers of navigating this life as a beautiful journey. Okay, you have the five of pentacles and the queen of wands. Five of pentacles, you know, when you connect to the zodiac, the angles of the zodiac, because even the tarot is connected to the wheel of the zodiac. This speaks of divine cycles and the blessings from those divine cycles it could be also silver linings the blessings in disguise so some of you know that for example the things that overwhelm you or that take a lot of space when you give yourself the space to process whatever it's creating in you you will see a blessing you will See, there's something about you tapping into your intuition. This is like the panther sees through darkness. Intense love of life, determination, altruism. Some of you, like you, I feel like a lot of power, powering through life, you know, as a, a warrior. Uh, but you want to be a spiritual you know, you want to be driven by spirit because it will give you, it's like every time you're presented energetically with a problem, the opposite comes. Every problem has its solution, but the solution can only be accessed through the space you create for spirit to come through, for your higher self to come through. Wow. 
I don't know what type of noise I'm hearing in the background. It definitely needs some space from the noise, okay? Let's see if, um, you know what? For you, I just feel like, what? what is this noise? There's something from the subconscious that I feel. I did not, hmm. This card was upright in the deck. Lessons. I look for opportunities in life's challenges via my dreams and I learn the lesson. Okay, through your subconscious. Definitely, I'm adding a lot of frequencies for you. If you don't find it, I have something called your subconscious mind. Please go check it out. Um, subconscious mind. I feel this pile, okay, the solar eclipse is really, uh, feels intense. It feels intense, okay? So if you've been feeling intense energy, it's because it's trying to let you go of all the noise, all the noise that your mind is telling you those uh, challenges mean. Your intuition, your higher self has a greater way for you to perceive those meanings. It has a greater way for you to integrate. You're going to integrate better. Some of you, if you're stuck in karmic uh, patterns, I highly suggest you know uh, you tune into some of my frequencies. I'm definitely part of the karmic chain breakers. Uh, I've known this part of my soul contracts, helping people process their karma. When I first received this, I was not happy. I was like, why? <laughs> People are not going to like this. But you know what? I've seen how ending my own karmic cycle has transformed my life. And that's what I want for others. Look at this. Mars, Gemini, and the first house. Okay? It's all about the self. It can be the ego. Gemini, again, yin, yang, Mars. The way you move forward, because Mars is your master teacher of energy in motion, emotion into action. How, how you feel creates a momentum. You need to shift that. There, are, there is power into shifting your fuel. Okay, let's get messages about how shifting all this. You already have a lot of frequencies that I shared. Some of you, if you're curious, some of you, if you're just, you know, fed up with what has been, okay, fed up, Oof. oh my god, I can feel it, again the queen of wands, uh-huh, but this one shows again, okay, you, you have to trust your intuition more, I feel that some of you, you've, you've removed, um, through your mind, or because you felt like it was a mistake when I followed my intuition, um, some of you could be something as simple as, it's an example, but just so you understand the dynamic. You know, you felt attracted to someone and you dared uh, texting them and you got rejected. And it's almost like, oh, see, I just, I, I, I shouldn't have, I should have not listened to my intuition, which was like that gut feeling of doing something. But you stopping there would limit you. Stopping there, I shouldn't have listened to that impulse because that impulse and that effect of rejection was supposed to show you, hey, that person is not in vibrational alignment with you. Why are you trying to be in vibrational alignment with something that doesn't open up naturally to you? Okay, some of you, there could be certain things like that going after things uh, out of sh like sheer power, uh, but mental power. And saying, let go. You have much more power when you work with your spiritual energy. Because you don't have, that's like inner power. And then the doors open. You don't even have to touch the door. You know, it's like, man, it's super, super power. You just walk into a room and all just like, like all dominoes unfold for you. You don't need to touch. You don't need to speak. You don't need to do. But that's inner power. And some of you, there's been like some repetition of attraction, you know, maybe not respecting cycles. Maybe some of you also not respecting people's space because you need the space. And maybe you're not realizing when others need that space. There's a lot of mirror that is going on with you with a lot of 
this. Some of you could have uh, related to the twin flame journey. I want to just mention it, okay? It's there. It's definitely there, some of you. All right. What else One needs to come through? Because we're reclaiming. We're reclaiming the power of intuition. We're reclaiming the power. Look at this. The king of pentacles. Uh, there could be a lot of people at play here. Okay? Mm -hmm. Keep on receiving messages. Keep on receiving messages. Okay, some of you, um, you know, watch how much you you let yourself be overwhelmed with other people's uh, messages. You know, for me on my phone, I remember when I started having uh, reels that went viral, my first reaction was because my phone just kept on ringing, bing, 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 nonstop, not stop, like, like, like. And I was like, oh my God, what did I do? What did I do? I will not find any peace. Thankfully, there is, uh, you know, options on your phone where you can mute certain apps and things like that. So I don't have, because I used to be that type of person that would, you know, someone would send me a message, right away I would have to attend to this. Okay? So I feel like there's something here for you that is related to this. Like as soon as someone um, is in need of something, you just kind of provide it for them. Mm -mm -mm. You have to see if it aligns with what you had planned for yourself. It's very important. Very important. There's, there's, there's such, it will, it will help you get out of a certain cycle of attraction. That overwhelming, that over, over busy, over noisy. Yeah, three of swords. Some of you, it's definitely in your relationship that you can find the greater lessons. Okay, things that broke your heart. People that rejected you, the five of swords. People that lied to you. People that betrayed you. There's some lessons to process here. The Knight of Swords, there's some truth. There's some truth. And I feel as some of you, um, you didn't realize, and that reminds me a little bit of pile number one here. Um, this is because of your light. You have a certain glow. You have a certain um, empathy. You have a certain capacity to solve problems. But it's more like you're doing it for others. Apply this wisdom to yourself, to yourselves. This is, okay, the one just wants to say that. Okay, what else? Cancer and Pluto. Mm. There's something here that wants to be transformed, that needs healing. What is this about your, like, it's almost like your main character energy. Okay. What is it? What is it? That main character energy is, is something you need to reclaim. Whoop. Whoa. Okay, the king of swords. Wow. You're seeing the truth. You know, you're seeing the truth. And you know what's interesting? The king of swords is connected to Gemini. You had a lot of Gemini energy. You had a lot. So it's, it's a, you need to reclaim the power. And that's something that you're doing. But I do feel that there, with all those cards... It's been a tiring journey for some of you, okay? It's like, why, why, why? Stop asking why about what. It's like create that space for yourself. Start receiving that counsel. You have a higher counsel that people would come to you. Take that energy. Take that space from you, okay? It's a counsel, that you're offering with all those king and queens. Again, the lovers. I really feel for some of you that it has to do with uh, partnership. Okay. When you take, when you take your advice and you apply them to yourself. Okay. When you uh, create that space for the part of you that is spiritual, you will see the truth in everything. I think this is what you're reclaiming is this, um, kind of a little bit like Ayoka energy, which is a form of empath that is, that is very sacred, that kind of like picks up on everyone and can create a lot of, uh, uh, of change of the noise. Okay. I feel that there's a strong sense of you picking up on the truth that you have to honor, but it comes from the space you create. It comes from 
processing what has been. Acceptance, lessons. This is going to be a shift in your DNA. This solar eclipse is activating this, whether you know it or not. It's coming through. It's coming through. You have, you have the moon, you have the sun, you have the Merkaba. This is being activated. I wouldn't be surprised. You're receiving some type of Kundalini activation. Lots of energy. Create the space for yourself to receive it. And things will align and start making more sense. That's what I have for you, my dear pile number three. If you need support, okay? I have created this, this type of pattern with all those pick a card readings. Yes, you have the frequency to support you, but I'll also create those cosmic alignment energy sessions so you can let this energy flow through you with more ease, create a spiritual practice and get your own insights, get your own truth, get to the bottom of things in ways that speak to you, like in greater ways. You know, for me, it's never been about like, oh, Audrey was right or oh, this, she's right. It's about reconnecting and confirming certain things so your inner guidance feels empowered. Okay, so if that's something that interests you, you'll see the options for the Star Seed Rise Up YouTube Star Family below. Remember, if you like this reading, please give it a thumbs up. I'm sending you many cosmic blessings. Happy rebirth, my dear one. And I will talk to you soon. Namaste.